Mini episode 1178 of the FDH Lounge is brought to you by Sportsology, delivering unconventional columns and webcasts about sports, TV, music, movies, and more. Follow them on the web at sportsology.com. The FDH Lounge. You'll want to schedule your life around it. A long time ago, on a gloomy, wet Cleveland spring night, two men stand alone amidst the late night drizzle. Their voices echo across the vacant station parking lot as they debate the merits of the great American radio show that have been missing for far too long. On that night, an idea was born. That idea became the FDH Lounge. Welcome to the FDH Lounge. Hello and welcome to FDH Lounge, mini-episode 1178, part of our FDH Lounge Look Back, Look Ahead series with the 2010s and 2020s. This is our examination of the NBA during those time periods. We've got our top players of the 2010s and top projected players of the 2020s and most important storylines of each decade as well. We start with our top five players of the 2010s. Number five, Kawhi Leonard. Number four, Dwayne Wade. Number three, Steph Curry. Number two, Kevin Durant. Number one, LeBron James. For honorable mention, it's Dirk Nowitzki, Clay Thompson, Kobe Bryant, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden. Here's how we project the 2020s. Number five, Nikola Jokic. Number four, Donovan Mitchell. Number three, Carl Anthony Towns. Number two, the Greek Freak. Number one, Luka Doncic. For honorable mention, it's Zion Williamson, Anthony Davis, Pascal Siakam, Joel Embiid, and Devin Booker. Here's our top five storylines of the 2010s. Number five, the dynasty that wasn't. As the decade rolled on and the development of super teams became a regular thing, the super team that could have ruled them all was broken up in 2012 with only a single Western Conference title to their credit. Granted, few if any forecast James Harden becoming such a dominant player at the time of the trade, but that just underscores the huge nature of the understatement on this show when we proclaim the deal the equivalent of the Ron Harper trade that broke up the late 80s, early 90s Cavs. OKC in the 2010s is a what-if with few equals in NBA history, not least of which because one of the closest comparisons was Shaq leaving Penny, but then Penny's knees broke down about 15 minutes later. Number 4. The Fall and Rise of the Lakers Who could have forecast that Dallas's shocking 2011 playoff sweep of the Lakers would mark the end of the most fearsome team at the turn of the decade? The next thing you know, Kobe breaks down, the Lakers let him destroy their salary cap, and they went into arguably the worst downward spiral in franchise history. But then they signed LeBron in 2018 and tampered with the Pelicans, allegedly, to acquire Anthony Davis, and they end the decade having gone full circle. Number three, the 2016 TV deal changed the game as few business developments in sports ever have. When Disney and Turner paid exponentially more to retain their broadcast rights, the union resisted the option of gradually escalating the salary cap in favor of a massive one-time cash grab. An unprecedented bonanza of massive deals reshaped the league's financial picture, and one deal in particular changed the very course of history. Golden State had the cap room to allow Kevin Durant to jump on board their bandwagon because they also had the previously injured Steph Curry on a below-market contract at the time. This deck-stacking move dominated the landscape of the league for the three seasons that this version of the Warriors were together. Number two, good or bad, no single player dominated the face of a decade like LeBron did the NBA in the 2010s. From the regrettable decision broadcast debacle to his maturation into a championship player in Miami to his epic return to Cleveland and central role in ending the city's unprecedented drought of 52 years without a major championship, to his move to L.A. for the epilogue to his career, LeBron was omnipresent, and he made it to the NBA Finals all four years in Miami and all four back in Cleveland, a streak only matched by the Bill Russell Celtics of the 1960s. Number one, the Warriors changed the game. Beyond their huge on-court success, the style of play implemented by then-rookie coach Steve Kerr in 2014 took advantage of the marriage of analytics and the outside shooting of the Splash Brothers to revolutionize the once marginalized role of three-pointers in the game. But don't let all of that distract you from the fact that they lost the game of the decade, Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals to the Cavs, and in so doing, yes, the Warriors blew a 3-1 lead. And here's our top five storylines looking ahead to the 2020s. Number five, for much of two decades, the league's explosive growth has been despite the collapse of the Knicks, 
one of their most important franchises. Will the 2020s be the third such decade? Snubbed three times by LeBron and once by KD and Kyrie, New York has learned what Jerry Krause did in the dawning days of this millennium, that cap space is fool's gold if nobody wants to take advantage of it. R.J. Barrett has a lot of upside, but he's on a roster that's messier than a kindergarten's handwriting with no help from above in this abysmal organization. Nobody can really force an owner to sell, but if things don't get better and there's no reason to believe that they will, don't be surprised if James Dolan wakes up one day with a proverbial horse's head in his bed from Adam Silver. Number four, while there are more established top names on the top level with them right now, Luca and the Greek Freak are the ones that look most likely to be there throughout the decade. Dallas and Milwaukee already have to be thinking about what it will take to keep them, as their free agency decisions will probably be the most consequential of the decade. Number three, is the next stylistic revolution in the league going to be based around pace? The last year of the 2010s saw a decided spike in the direction of pushing offense aggressively, and if it continues strongly in this direction, it will mitigate against the advances in sports science that have allowed older stars like LeBron to dominate well into their 30s. Number two, one and dones could be done in 2022. That draft would then have double shot power, but then we will return to the proliferation of raw question marks at the top of so many drafts just before and just after the turn of the millennium. Of course, in what would be 20 years after the end of high school eligibility for the draft, high schoolers are more on the radar than ever before and more aware than ever before about what they have to do to be pro-ready. So maybe this development wouldn't change the landscape quite as much as some might think. Number one, the super teams should be less super. Due to the present cap situation and roster composition of most teams, the odds are that there will be no teams with three megastars in the near future, but plenty with two. Accordingly, there could be a bit more parity, albeit among a top tier of six to eight teams. But then again, anything looks like parity compared to four straight years of Cavs versus Warriors in the finals. Thank you for joining us for this mini-episode of the FDH Lounge.